A group of 125 Afghans, female police officers, judges, activists, even professional cyclists and their families, trying to find a way out by land or by air, staying in secret safe houses along the way. For some, new passports made by Afghan diplomats abroad transferred into the country. These now former police officers, their identities hidden over safety concerns, describe part of their ordeal while in hiding. We were hiding at a location with other 120 people, but the location was discovered by Taliban. We studied for 18 years and we helped with the recruitment of women to the police ranks. Our aim was to improve the potential of women and increase their numbers in the ranks of the security forces. In general, we worked very hard for Afghanistan, but now this opportunity has been taken away from us. The already treacherous journey made even more dangerous because of the nationality of their rescuers. For Israeli NGO Israel, it was the second evacuation out of Afghanistan in a month, led by Yotam Pulitzer, who coordinated the rescues from a neighboring country. Israel had never before undertaken such an ambitious rescue operation. The way it all came together was very, um, was not well, like was not planned. It was all kind of a, an emergency response. After a very stressful couple of days of trying to cross through different places, including some very intense situations where the group was, uh, was surrounded by Taliban, we decided that the only way out is actually a flight through the northern airport in Afghanistan, through Mazar Sharif. But negotiating with the Taliban to leave Afghanistan was only part of the battle. They needed a neighboring country, which we've been asked not to name, to transit through, and a third country where the group could be held before ultimate resettlement. A patchwork group of activists, wealthy donors, and more pulled every string possible. People who, who were able to just pick up the phone and call this president or call this prime minister uh, and, and um, influence them immediately to open their border. The first group extricated by Israel, made up of female cyclists and members of a robotics team, ended up in the UAE, something that may not have even been possible just a few years ago. An Emirati foreign ministry spokesperson celebrated their arrival and the joint operation with the Israelis on Twitter. How did the Abraham Accords affect your ability to work with the Emiratis? I think it's absolutely affected. I mean, there's no way that we could do it before, and for them, it was a very special partnership. They really appreciated the fact that it was like the first joint humanitarian mission. Um, and in a lot of our conversations with really high-level government officials, they said that they want to do much more of that. None of these rescues could happen without some serious financial support, much of which came from an anonymous family foundation and Canadian-Israeli billionaire Sylvan Adams. An avid cyclist, Adams felt drawn in particular to his fellow two-wheelers so many people, but specifically women, um, who have been given a taste of freedom and, and uh, openness, uh, including riding your bike, and, and today will be at best persecuted and possibly lose their lives simply for riding their bicycles. And as a Jew, he says, it's his duty to help where he can. We have the, this ancient cultural imperative, it's my obligation to try to practice tikkun olam uh, improving our world. So um, I get involved in situations where I know I'm, bl I'm blessed to be able to help. After a five-day journey, the second group made it to Albania, where they'll be hosted until resettlement. Hadas Gold, CNN, Tel Aviv.